Live from Studio 5 in New York City, this is the News at 6. Coming up next for you tonight, we all could use a little helpful remedy to keep ourselves balanced in life, right? For some people, that means turning to a good book for happiness. We're talking about bibliotherapy. It's a good story, and it's coming up right after the break. All right, welcome back on this Friday night. We uh, all know that mental health is extremely important, and it can really be a struggle in the grind of living and working every day. So tonight, our feature story focuses on one approach to reaching a better balance in our lives. How about reading? Stacy Delicat shows us more about bibliotherapy. This one is for anyone who's trying to grapple with an addiction to social media. It's a different kind of prescription. Noreen Tomasi is a bibliotherapist. People come to her with their problems to find out what books will help them cope. I meet with them for a little less than an hour, like a traditional therapist, and I recommend 12 books, one a month for a year, in a particular order to walk them through the problem and let them see how characters in fiction are dealing with the same problem. Tomasi is executive director of the Center for Fiction in Midtown, a nonprofit literary organization where members can buy or borrow books and attend lectures and other events. She's been practicing bibliotherapy for six years and believes that reading can make people happier. I think it makes a lot of people happier, and I think it makes a lot of people more thoughtful about their lives. Tomasi sees about two clients a week for $200 a session. Money, she says, goes towards the center's children's reading initiatives. And while she calls herself a therapist, she's clear that her service is not a substitute for actual mental health care or medications. I think bibliotherapy is really for the worried well. It's for people who are trying to figure out their lives, not people struggling with, through a major depressive episode or bipolar disorder or a serious anxiety disorder. Contemplating a major change in their life hands down, is the biggest problem people have. For that, she might recommend Katie Kitamura's A Separation. For new parents trying to strike a work-family balance, Jenny Ophel's Department of Speculation. For every obstacle or issue, there are fictional characters to whom readers can relate. If you're interested in turning to books as a form of therapy, but you don't want to necessarily pay for a prescription, there are places that you can go for good free advice, like the New York Public Library. So if you came in and you said, I just broke up with my boyfriend, you know, I'm feeling terrible, I might say, oh, I, you know, I can certainly give you, you know, something really funny to read that will give you some new perspective, or I can give you a really sad book if you want to cry about someone else who just broke up with their boyfriend. Lynn Lobash is the public library's manager of reading services and occasionally writes a blog on bibliotherapy. While librarians aren't bibliotherapists, they can advise readers on what books might meet their emotional needs. And Lobash Bash agrees getting lost in a book can help people find sanity. It's slow and you know you concentrate and you focus and it's not a million you know distractions happening it's just you and this book and this story in this place. A form of therapy in and of itself. Stacy Delacat, Fox 5 News. All right, Stacy, thank you very much. Let's continue talking about this great subject. Joining me right now is an old friend back again. This is Dr. Ben Michaelis, New York psychologist. Good to have you back, Dr. Ben. Thanks for having me. Right. That's a good subject. You know, yes, I mean, uh, there are self-help books out there. You know, now we're talking about fiction and so forth. But this really can help us, though, to maybe feel happier and feel better. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure, as you know from yeah. your own experience, mm -hmm. when you read the right book at the right time, it can yeah. really open you up to new mm -hmm. possibilities, new ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, really the art of bibliotherapy, is getting to know the client, getting to know where they are in life, and knowing the text so that you match them closely together. That really is important. I mean, making sure, like you said, you, you connect, you know, with the right information. How about when you're trying to decide, you know, like, what do you recommend for, I mean, like, relationships, work, stress, health, and so forth. How do you make those decisions? Well, again, you get to know the person. You understand right. what's going on for them in their life because people are going through different things at different times. Mm -hmm. So you probably wouldn't recommend the same text for someone that's ending a relationship versus someone that's starting one. Right, right. And so understanding that and making the right match can really mm -hmm. help people. And well, how about ages? You know, when you start talking about younger people and, and middle age and, and, and the elderly, I mean, that's also personalized reading. It, it absolutely is. And, and again, appreciating where they are in their stage in their own particular journey so that you find the right text that works for them mm -hmm. depending on what they're going through. Now, when you're talking about bibliotherapy, right? Mm -hmm. I, and I know you mentioned that it's been around for a while. It has been. Uh, actually, 
the term came from a Atlantic Magazine article from 1916. So the idea of giving your clients, your patients, texts right. to help them is not a new idea, although it has really gained some steam in re recent so years. So it's like they say, everything old is new again, right? Yes, indeed. Uh, okay, if you're going to recommend something for us, maybe perhaps uh, summer reading, a, a good book. Summer Tell reading, uh, one thing that I've really, really loved is a book called Sapiens by... Uh, Sapiens? Yeah, uh, Noah Harari is his name. Okay. And it's this really brilliant book, just sort of explaining how we've gotten to where we are right now as mm. human beings. And I think it really puts a lot of things into context, especially when things in the world are not always I going was as say, smoothly. Yeah, this is probably about the right time, you know, to be talking about common human experiences that we all have, right? Indeed. So you like the idea. I mean, the, the, the reading thing is something that, that you use in your practice and you think it's important. I do think so. Yeah. I mean, for people that are in the midst of an acute episode, it's probably not necessarily the right thing. And a lot of the, the, the practitioners of bibliotherapy know that it's not necessarily the best thing for someone mm -hmm. depending on their state of mental health. This isn't like a prescription per se, right. it's, it's helping people that are struggling with ideas here and there, but it's not for someone that's really in the midst of like a major episode. Got it. Okay. Like happy reading, happy times, Dr. Ben Michaelis. Thanks Indeed. for joining us. Thank you. Okay. All right. Coming up next here.